Good evening, good evening, good evening. Are we recording? We are live. Hey, y'all. It's your boy, Nick Bay. And it's his wife, Charmaine Bay, just uploading a quick selfie. That's right. That's my beautiful wife. She's here with me looking Aww. gorgeous than ever. And we have a, a special episode, but I do want to say. Sweet. We've kind of been. Been, you know, I don't think, damn, we dropped the episode a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, we've been a little occupied. Two kids. Oh, Lord. Two kids. That birthday just passed. Yes, and Charmaine's birthday passed. We My birthday, birthday is in a couple of days. So <laughs> this month is really the most busy part of the year. All yes. our birthdays in February and March. Um, Make sure you look at the camera up there because you're looking down here. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it looks weird. No, it doesn't look real because not everybody looks at the camera on, on podcast. Um, because sometimes they're reading stuff. But uh guys, we have an interesting episode uh because this woman very interesting. Um, yeah, this woman uh she went viral, y'all. And um her story is crazy. I wanna read I wanna read you a quick uh, a quick few sentences and we're gonna have her come in and tell us the, the story. But a woman says she found out her baby father gave her HIV and he also was sleeping with her father while they were married. That is, I mean, it's a story like this. First off, I'm speechless. A story like this, you're like, that sounds like it's made up. Like how how he give you HIV and sleeping with your daddy? Like that's crazy. So we gotta talk to this lady and find out what her story is. This is wild. This is wild. Yeah, this is a big one, guys. So um, I think it's important to find out, obviously, the full story. Um, obviously, she was living in a mirage marriage. Um, obviously, like, yeah, and this goes to show, like, somebody you love, well, they don't mind be betraying you. I mean, two people she loved, a daddy and her husband. Her husband. And I think um, her husband, uh, her, I think he had admitted to be uh, sleeping with her father after they got divorced or something Ugh. like that. But I don't know. I, I would let her tell you guys the story. She's coming on um, tonight and she's going to tell us the full story on what happened. And hopefully uh, people can learn from this, man. Um, you know, Mirage marriages, we have people like them on to tell their story uh, to help the next person, you know, so they can avoid something like this. So this is, this is going to be a, uh, it's going to be intense, y'all. So get ready. I'm already feeling like the jitters, man. I'm getting, I'm a little nervous for this one. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Cause you never really get a, a kick in someone else's pain. You feel yeah. me? So I'm a little nervous finding out her story, but I hope that there are people who are listening that might see some red flags in their own relationship. And this might help answer your questions. Because now you know your husband and your daddy, you can't trust them. Damn. So everybody can't trust their husband and the guy. Um, I looked at you, but I did three. Yeah, don't, don't worry about that. Um, so y'all get ready, get your popcorn ready. Yeah. This is going to be a very interesting, um, episode and, um, you know, pay attention, take some notes and, um, let's get straight to it. Let's do it. Hey, 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 what's up? Brenda J is here. How are you? I'm good. I'm yeah. Good. We're very excited to have you. I, I have a little anxiety. Uh, knowing what I know about your story. Right. And I would say we know too, too much. Um, obviously you went viral just recently. Um, and you also said, I, I know on the, on the DM, he was like, my husband, my husband's setting up the computer. So it's good to know that, <laughs> you know, you found love again, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, and your newfound love, and then we'll get all to the, the crazy stuff. Let's go, let's get some positivity in first. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, you guys. My name is Brenda J. I love to be called Brenda J. Um, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a wife. I'm a mother of three. Nice. Um, I met my husband a year after being diagnosed with HIV. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. at first I was like, who would want me? Nobody gonna want me. I got two kids. 
I got HIV. No man is is going to want me. And I believed that for a very long time until God told me that he was going to bless me with a husband. And I was like, yeah, okay. And a Uh year later, I was just chilling on a couch and I went through this app called POF and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was just looking because I Plenty knew that. Fish. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't got an account, but I know about it. <laughs> I knew that, yeah, you know, cool. I wasn't going to find anybody on there because I used to get on there when I was younger. And I just so happened to see my husband with his no- with his hand in his nose. And I was like, Sir, why do you have this picture? How are you going to attract women if you got this picture like this? He said it, but you in my DM. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, we was talking for, I want to say, a month um, before we actually met in person. And before we met in person, I told him, hey, I'm HIV positive. You know, this is how I got it. And, you know, I want to give you the fair chance to decide if you want to be with me. And when I told him, he was like, okay. And I was like, okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, something you need to tell me? But no, it was. Right, you like something wrong out. here. <laughs> right. You said, control. okay. Right. No, but that's that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. So when it comes to your current relationship now um, and you having HIV, just to give just to educate, right. you know, people, um, can you tell us how you were able to protect him um, with having HIV and having this wonderful relationship y'all have? So um, my husband's name is Brendan, and Brendan, Brendan is... Brendan J and Brendan. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty close. Right? <laughs> so... Um, I protect my husband by being undetectable, meaning that a 0% chance for me to give him HIV. So even if I wanted to give him HIV, I can't. Um, and it's a 100% chance that he would not get HIV for me. And no, we do not use protection. Okay. And it, it, are you like on medication or something? Yes. Or... I take okay. one pill a day. I take Odepsy. So as long as you're taking your medicine and you get your um, your blood to undetectable, you have nothing to worry about. It's the closest thing to not having it. Wow. wow. Okay. Well, I love the fact that he did not let that stop him from love right. and was able to move forward in this relationship because I do know people who um, have HIV who really struggle with telling every single person that they end up wanting to date up front that they have it. And it's worked out for some and for others, it didn't work out so much. So I'm glad that it worked out for you, especially after the trauma that you went through yeah. with your first husband. And <laughs> are you ready to get into that? Cause I am. I, I mean, I was still, I mean, I guess we'll get back to this. You know what I mean? When it comes to um, your current husband, um, because like like she said, I do think that is very honorable and dope yeah. that um, he was able to see you for you. And what was going through my head, though, before we do jump into that, is that is crazy because there's so many women that have issues with finding a partner. And, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of women watching now. There's like, hold on, what the hell? She got me in there. <laughs> you know, throw, throw a little say they can't help we it. We get you that know? a lot, though. We do. Right? So on TikTok, <laughs> I have over almost 200,000 followers. Wow. So, and then my YouTube video is at a half a million. Um, I told my story two years ago mm. and there were so many women that was like in my husband's inbox, why would you want her? Like, look at me, look at her, you know, but this is what wow. I tell people, you know, I'd be like the same way I got my husband, you can get yours too. All I did was ask God. That's all I did. Mm. That's it. What was the I prayer? Prayed. What was the prayer? <laughs> you want to know. People do want to know the prayer. <laughs> so my prayer was God to send me someone who not only loves me for me, but a lot of people going to say this is cliche. Like <laughs> a lot of people say it is, but my prayer was that God sent me a man that loved him because when he loved God, he'll love me right. No, that, that, yeah. see, let me tell you, I ain't really never heard that. Me neither. Like a prayer like that. <laughs> what? But that is a <laughs> real prayer to ask yeah. for. That is a big, it's a big reason why relationships don't work 
from either side. They don't love each other enough. And it does cause friction because there's needs. There's, there's extra needs, extra wants, you know, a couple insecurities here and there. You know what I mean? It definitely makes it harder if you don't love yourself. Even if you're trying to find love, it's yeah. even harder to find love if you don't love yourself. Absolutely. So and you don't you know how to me. love someone else if you don't know how to love yourself. So yeah. that's like yeah. so important. How was it coming out on the internet with this story? Was it hard for you to do that? What made you decide like, I'm going to go public with my story? Because for some people, it's even hard just to let friends or nosy family members in their business. So you're letting social media and everyone have, you know, some something to say. So how hard was it for you to do that? And why did you make that decision? Well, it was hard at first. I was like, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's all over the news. So in Tallahassee, Florida. So some people knew. Um, Wait, why was it all over the news? I'm not too familiar. Oh, yeah. I saw, yeah. I saw the article. Yeah, 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 It's bigger than, you know, what people think it is. The state got involved. It was a lot because I was only 19 years old and I was pregnant. Okay. Wow. And yeah. how old was he? 35. Oh, okay, okay, so oh, we don't have to get to the story. To to <laughs> but to um, to answer okay. your question, my husband pushed me <laughs> to do this because I know what it feels like as a 19 year old and 20 year old with no guidance of knowing that there's life after HIV. So I wanted to be that person that I couldn't find when I first was diagnosed. And when um, my book is called Bruce, but not broken. So my husband, it was just supposed to be in a diary. And my husband wanted me to write my trauma from the beginning to the end. And when he actually read it, it was hard for him at first. It was really hard for him to read it. And then he convinced me to turn it into a book. It was my husband. That wow. was amazing. God is, God is. Shout out to good. Brendan. Shout right? out to Brendan. Shout out to you. That's my man. That's, I love it. I love um, it because he does my man and I feel the same way about him. You know what I'm but Brenda J, I'm ready to get all up in your business, girl. Yeah, because you're 19. He's 35. So how did y'all meet? How did y'all even meet? Oh, how did this man. thing even happen? Oh, man. Oh, man. You won't believe it. No. My real father introduced us. No. I met him through my dad. Wait. The same dad that he was sleeping with. Yeah. But do you think that your ex-husband and your dad were already sleeping together before you even married him, dated him, anything? Oh, man, this is going to get messy. Um, No, he didn't tell. Like, he didn't do it until I told him how good it was. Wow. Okay. So and is your dad, did you ever know your dad was homosexual? I did. He was, he's more of a down low. Like he's right. a bishop. How long more of a down low. He is a down low. Okay. <laughs> no, he's, he's, a bishop. More of a da- he's a bishop of a church. So of course he got to be completely down low. But now everybody knows he's not down low anymore. Oh no. Everybody knows now. Okay. So he was so, a bishop of a church. And did this, is this guy in the church? Um, my ex-husband? Yeah, ex-husband I meant, sorry. No, he's not in the church. Okay. So did you ever like question your dad? Like, why would you hook me up with a 35 year old? Like, did you, did you ever 19, see that that was like a flag? Well, after everything went down, my dad is the type to sweep everything under the rug. He's one of those type people. Um, the let the past be the past, but yet he was in my husband inbox who I'm with now, sending kissy faces. No, he what? wasn't, girl. My no, husband. He wasn't. After all of this. My husband, Brandon, just, yeah, it wasn't pretty. Wait, after so all of this. he in your husband now DMs yes. to, test, to test the waters. He's sick. Yeah. Sorry to say, but that no, is, like, right. sickening. He has you're something right. against you, too. Like I said that. I said that, and I, you, I don't know what it is. I don't. But did, I you, mean, did you ever have any issues here. with him? No. Up? That was when I moved to Tallahassee, when all this went down, that's probably like the first time I saw my dad since I was like maybe once or twice when I was young. Really? So, so your, your really parents didn't weren't, aren't together? No. You don't really know him. He introduced you to a 35-year-old man when you were mm-hmm. 19. Yep. And I, let's go back to yeah, your dad being down low. Hold, okay. hold on. Because I'm going to drop the bomb on y'all first. 
Mama, oh, wait, yeah, wait, 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 wait. Before you drop the bomb, I have <laughs> to know. Um, oh, God, what was it? Drop it. Oh, wait. Mm. All right, drop the bomb. <laughs> My mom was a you child. Said- Your mom what? My mom was one of the children he was molesting in his church. No. The wife knew what? that she was pregnant with me and everything. Oh, no. so your so your dad was married and had an affair with with your mom. Uh, he was he, married he, he, to his your... brother's ex wife. What? This is just the craziest story. So he's married to your bro- his brother's ex wife, mm-hmm. and then when you, how old was your mom when he molested her? She was sixteen. She got pregnant with me at seventeen. Okay. So that's why your dad was never in your life. Because... Look, I, I want to know the full story, but is, is he in jail now? Well, he's out. He is a sex offender, a registered sex offender. So he is out now. He's still pastoring as a bishop. Um, he's married to a woman now. Yeah. And he... How did you know that your dad was on the DL? That's what I wanted to ask. My mom. She exposed a lot to me. Uh, my mom never lied about my dad to me. So I still wanted to know who my dad was. And um, my sugar daddy was convincing me not to go to Tallahassee, but I still wanted to go to know who my dad was. So where were you at before Tallahassee? Um, I was in Jacksonville, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, And how old were you when you had the sugar daddy? Well, (laughs) my first sugar daddy, I think I was like maybe 16, 17 years old. Really? And how old were the sugar daddy? How old was he? Like 60. Was it like, yeah. did you, is it kind of more of like a platonic situation or you have to, you know. Did you have to put out to give, to give? No, um, the, even the, the pills didn't even work. So. <laughs> Wait, so he tried to drug you? No. He, you. Um, oh no, he, he his, was like, taking Viagra pills. pills. Yeah, right, right. he was taking pills and it still didn't work. So. I'm like, look, girl, this story just gets <laughs> so, so crazy. You, you, you got lucky. I mean, I'm I've like, been drunk yes. before. I've been drunk before, but it wasn't by him. I am actually wow. a victim of human trafficking. Wow. So you've gone through a lot. Yeah. You've gone through a lot. Okay. It, I mean, I know Florida's like pretty wacko. How how old are you, babe? How old are you <laughs> no, now? I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of shit going on in Florida. How old are you now, Brenda J? Oh, I am 26 now. I'm 26. All right. You're 26 now. So walk us back to when your dad introduced you to your ex-husband that he started sleeping with. Okay. So before I do that, you have to understand why I have a sex addiction at that moment, because it's going to make sense. So my sex addiction started when I was eight years old where I was wow. receiving my first orgasms. Um, and then down the line, my brothers, they gang raped me. Um, it was three of them and they took my virginity from me. So I was never a virgin. I used to lie. I didn't tell my mom until I was 18 years old about it, what happened and that I was never a virgin. Um, my sex addiction never started. That's how I ended up um, stripping and prostitution. And then... Um, I had ended up in a human trafficking situation, but by the grace of God, I got out of the alive because I, I'm not supposed to be here because it was to my head in the middle of the woods. So I'm not supposed to be here. Um, what you, so, what you mean it was to your head? Like you got shot? Um, the pistol was to my head. Um, and I was on all kind of drugs, have no clue. Um, they sold me for drugs. So I had no clue what I was on, but I was on a lot of stuff. And at this point, I was only 18 years old. And um, the person wanted to kill me. But when I tell you, I prayed like it was no tomorrow. But I always tell people, if you've never been through a near-death experience, then you won't understand what I'm about to say. But I saw my body on that ground with a bullet hole. And I'm not going to lie. Sometimes me and my husband would be in the bed and I'd be like, is I'm really living? Because I'm finally living the life that I always ask God for. So I sometimes I asked him that because I knew I'm supposed to be dead. But by the grace of God, I'm still alive. So wow. that's how we got and to Tallahassee. These, 
all these details. Is this stuff in your book, basically? Yes. Worse, and, but yes. And when you were when you were eight, um, what drove you to just even understanding this type of stuff and and having you know, a sex addiction about sex or stuff like that? Well, my mom. Um, she was really young and she married into this family, not knowing that they really been incest. My mom had no clue. She was young and she had me and then she had my sister. And whew, Wait, um, your mom mar- ended up marrying your dad who was raping. No, her. no, she married okay, someone you... else. Okay. Yeah. So, so this family that she married with that was living in this incest yeah. world she didn't know you were a no. child and brought into that. Right. My mom didn't know either. She was young. Mm. She was really young. Um, and he was older than her. He, it was like almost me and my ex-husband type age group. Mm. So um, I was being molested at his, at my mom, ex-husband um, mother house. She knew what was going on. Um, at eight, you're saying? Oh, no, it started before eight my addiction just started at eight. Um, she knew that they was coming to get me out of her room, her bed. She actually caught me masturbating before at eight years old and she didn't say anything. She just walked out. Yeah. It's horrible. Did you have, I know, um, did you have anybody to like, that had your back or somebody that was there and didn't hurt you or were you kind of like just by yourself lost in with, with all this stuff going on and you're like around you. I was never safe. It didn't stop until 21 when I met my husband. That's when my life changed. Mm -hmm. So you, you went to, you went to, um, uh, Tallahassee. Yes. Tallahassee, Florida to meet your dad. Yes, and my older sister. And what made you want to meet him? Like, how did y'all get in contact? My older sister, um, I haven't seen her since I was a kid. And I I mean, I'm the oldest on my mom's side. I'm tired of, you know, being the one with all the responsibilities. So it felt good to know I had a big sister. And me and her talk for hours and hours over the phone. Like, we've been talking. And my sister was like, you should come here. You know, I was just supposed to visit at first. And then she convinced me to go to school there because I always believed that I wasn't smart enough because I was never really told that I was smart and ambitious and stuff like that. And my sister told me, girl, you have a business mindset. Like, you don't even realize the gift you have. And I believed there, you know, because, I mean, I am good at what I do. So, um My dad got on the phone and was like, I really want to see you. Like, he made it seem like he was um, dying or something, but he's a manipulator real bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did say, how can you manipulate the manipulator? So um, I believed him, and I ended up going to Tallahassee. He booked me a um, bus ticket and picked me up from the Greyhound. Yeah. Wow. So so how long since then, like, when you got there, how long did it take for him to kind of – introduce this guy to your life, your ex-husband to your life? I want to say it was like three months. It was like three months because like around that time, um, I was heavy in the church. Like I was almost like his armor barrel because I can actually see. So I was like his backbone, you know, in the church um, because I was the one prophesying and praying and singing and stuff like that. So I was his backbone and God started giving me dreams so I knew if something was wrong about my dad. Okay. So in these dreams, was God like revealing your dad's demons? Like snakes. Mm-hmm. And my aunt called um, and was like, she had a dream. And she knew I'm a dreamer. And she was like, I had a dream that you was going to get AIDS. You need to leave now. I didn't believe her. How, how, how? So obviously at that moment you didn't have AIDS. No. No. And uh you weren't sleeping with this guy yet. No. Wow. And so, does your dad have AIDS? I can't answer that, but you can read the first two pages of my book. <laughs> but I can't verbally wow. answer that. Guidelines. Right. Especially <laughs> especially with them sleeping with each other, I could imagine. Mm. So 
I always Three say, in. I always say this. Now I can say this for you. He didn't get it from my ex husband. I'm put it like that. Yeah. Wow. So, is there a chance that your dad gave it to your ex husband? No. Mm. Damn. So they just two nasty niggas. Mm-hmm. Like each other. Come on now. Um, <laughs> so describe. So was this guy? Now, getting married, obviously, is a big thing. You're young, so mm-hmm. you obviously was manipulated as well. But yes, um, explain the journey from y'all first meeting to falling and liking enough to get married. You know, explain that journey and, and fill us in on how, how it went down. Um, That is kind of tricky because I always tell my followers that I don't blame him 100%, even though he manipulated and my dad had a lot to do with it. Um, because a lot of things I should have knew better, even though I didn't have no guidance, but I still should have knew better as a woman. So, um, my dad had, I'm reliving it. So yeah, I'm reliving it for y'all. So, um, sorry about that too. It's okay. It's okay. Um, my dad had brought him over and he walked in the house. Now, remind you before I met my ex-husband person for the first time, Apostle told me that there's a man that's going to walk in your house and he means you no good. And I was like, I don't know nobody here. So who's going to walk in my house that don't mean me no good? So literally the next day, my ex-husband walks through my door. And um, he was bringing a TV that my dad brought for my sister upstairs where we was living at because we was living like on the second floor. And he, I saw when he looked at me and around that time I used to script. So I would always like, I always say that I had the BBL without actually having the BBL at that age. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of grown men was after me as a child. But um, I saw when he looked at me, like I, I was like, like my focus was just on school at that moment, school and church. Mm -hmm. So um, I heard him talking to my sister. So my dad was in the living room talking to me. and was like, how's school? Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, it's fine. You know, I'm liking it. And then as they was leaving, I noticed that my ex-husband looked at me. So me being me, I played it off like he was watching my sister butt. (laughs) So I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. I see y'all, you know, just trying to push him off because my focus is really on school. I just graduated high school. So my focus is on college right now. Um, Mm -hmm. So it was like a few days later, my dad brought him back to our home because it was around Thanksgiving. And... Um, we was just like sitting on the couch and I didn't know nobody. He didn't know nobody. What I didn't know was he just got out of prison for, as a sex offender. Um, so and did I had, your dad know that? Oh yeah, he knew a hundred percent. He knew just like my dad knew he was HIV positive. So yeah. Um, and sex, hold on. So sex offender, like what, do you know exactly what he did? Um, which one, my ex-husband or my dad? Your dad is a sex offender as well before everything went down. Yeah. So what what do they both what what uh, what do they both do to get that? So to be my dad, um, me and my mom was just talking about that today. It's crazy. So my dad, um, he was molesting girls and boys in his church when they was kids. Um, one of the kids kept like acting out, going in and out of um, juvenile, and they finally asked him, "What is wrong with you? Why are you acting like this?" All of a sudden, he was like, "My pastor is bending me over." And that's how he got yeah. locked up. And they was trying to convince my mom to lock him up as well, because then he would have got life. And because then he, because uh, your mom was underage, right? Yeah, and she was. And she didn't want to do it. Mm-mm. She said she didn't want to do it. I think she was just scared. Right. Scared of what though? Like doing that would put him behind bars and would allow him to never do that again to other people. So. What? She's still young and she's pregnant, you know? Well, no. And then his family, I'm just going to put it like this. Um, I don't know if you believe in witches and warlocks. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I'm, put it I'm like open. That. Oh, yeah, I'm um, Asian. I mean, I, I do. Yeah, I do, do. so I'm going to put it like that and I'm going to leave it like that. All right. There's some witches and warlocks. Oh, are they are they from Tallahassee? Like where are they from? No, my dad is from Jacksonville, but because Jacksonville are more strict on sex offenders than Tallahassee, that's why he went to Tallahassee. Mm. And 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 so, 
but like the lineage, everybody's like from the U.S. and like it, mm-hmm. nobody's like okay. Yeah, everybody. From yeah, the I mean, I'm from Slidell, Louisiana, and you know they they get down with all that. <laughs> in Slidell or voodoo Morris. and well, I know Louisiana voodoo yeah, yeah, and everybody just do that in Slidell. Other beliefs, yeah, babe, cross the bayou. You don't even know what you're talking about. All right, um, <laughs> what is yeah. your ex? What? Well, why was your ex husband a uh, sex offender? So um, what I was told was um, that he was molesting one of his little cousins. And this is what they say. So (laughs) he went into after we got married to tell me this. I didn't know none of this. Um, But he was molesting his little cousin. But he said he never did that. And that it was a farce because of jealousy. The aunt was jealous of him and the relationship with the grandparents, blah, blah, blah. So there was other family members that one of them I was close to. She actually told me that story, too. But honestly, I don't believe nothing because when his sister came to me and told me what she did to him, what he did to her when she was a child, I knew that was a lie. I knew then that everything the sister said, I 100% believe her because I know how that feel and the emotions that she was responding to me about, I knew. And my ex-husband one time, he told me, you and my sister, y'all, y'all the same, y'all play victim. So I knew then, I knew then it wasn't a lie. He did it. And the, and the person he, was it a boy or a girl? A girl. Well, from the, the situation of him going to prison, a boy. Yeah. A boy. boy. Yeah. So he is molesting girls and boys. Yeah. So, um, you guys, so he came over to the house and you guys started looking at each other. I mean, you made the jokes and stuff. So, so continue that, uh, story as far as, um, how things progressed. Cause I want to so, know, like, did you really like him? Like, did you really, um, like, have feelings for him? <laughs> oh God, this is going to get messy. Um, so like in the beginning, I really wasn't like, I'm used to entertaining dudes cause I used to be a stripper. So I'm used to just entertaining yeah. people, but not really taking them serious. So that's what I was doing. We was laughing and stuff. Um, I didn't give him my number. I gave him my messenger on Facebook cause I don't give men my number. So we were just messing each other laughing and blah, blah, blah. And then one day we got on the phone and it just like took off. And then, um, like, I want to say a few months later, he came to my home and we did it. And Mm -hmm. I think that's when he got me. It was lust, Mm -hmm. not love. I grew to love him, but it was lust. Right. Right. And um, you keep saying that you were a stripper. What age were you a stripper? Because you met him at 19. So 18. Okay. Soon after you were stripping for like a year. Yeah. And then moved to be with your dad. Met this I, guy that your dad introduced you to. I wanted a new Y'all life. Y'all was right, right. starting trying yeah. to start a new life. Yeah. yeah. I, so I did. the sex so the sex was really good. Right, cuz you said that before. If my husband's not watching this, um babe, I'm sorry, but it was amazing. Right. Yeah. But and at 19 years old, something having happened. amazing sex Okay. Something happened though. So mm-hmm. as we was um, having sex, um, he snuck the condom off, and I had no clue the condom was off. He snuck it off, wow. and I was he did that the first out. time y'all had sex. Yeah, he snuck the condom off. Wow! And that's why I said I don't hundred percent blame him because I should have just like my sister, she went off on me, but I should have said no, you know. Did but, he know he had HIV before he did that? Yes. And you know that for a fact? Yes. So State you can put involved. him in jail. He did. I did. Yeah, yeah. So, so hold on. So you didn't know he took the condom off? No, not at first. Like when he first went in, I was like, oh my God, is this is what a grown man feels like? Like I never had that before. So Mm -hmm. I literally melted. I used the words melted. I melted. And I noticed that like he pulled out for a second. He was struggling. I was like, what is going on? Like, you're not supposed to stop. So I turned around. I saw him struggling, putting the condom on. But it was my response. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, my response was the reason why I I blame myself. Right. Like, oh, just forget it. I said. I mean, you got it off. You might as well finish. That was my response. Right. 
Right. Yeah. And that is a lesson mm-hmm. right there to all, all the of our ladies watching. It happens to the best happen. of us. It does happen a lot. It happens a lot. And sometimes we lust for it to be off. Sometimes we just want to feel, we want to feel what it feel like to, you know, and we know it's going to feel good to him. And, you know, you want him to feel that, but like, you really got to think about the repercussions of why the condom is even a thing to begin with. So yeah. thank you for sharing this story. Cause you know, we got to make sure that we protect each other. Um, you know, wom- woman to woman. So, I mean, I've been, definitely been in situations where it's like, fuck the condom, you know? Yeah. First time I had sex with him, you know, <laughs> we didn't use the condom and luckily things worked out, but it, it's not always like that. Right. So explain to us from this first time that you guys slept together and you decide, you know, and, and getting married, like where, what happened in between this, this and how long did it take? Cause it seemed like it was probably pretty quick. It was. So, um, after that first time of us having sex, I became delusional because I mean, I never had a real grown man before. So that was new to me and I became delusional and, um, my dad convinced me that he was a good man and I had nothing to worry about and that he would marry us. And, um, we end up start my sister, um, child's father had got out of prison and we decided to, Hey, let's all get a place together. So we got a place together. We all was living together. I didn't have no kids. He didn't have no kids that I knew of at the time, none. And uh, my sister, she had my niece and, you know, she was a little older, so she knew how to take care of herself. Everything was going good until it wasn't. Yeah. So my, like when I tell you it was going good, like we was all peas in the pot. Me and my sister relationship, when we were so close, it was no longer. Um, her baby daddy tried to sleep with me. Um, I told her immediately. I did not play that. I told my um, husband at the time, I told him what happened. And the thing is, he didn't do anything about it because they were sleeping together. Um so they were supposed to went fishing. Wait, 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 wait. You. Your husband <laughs> and your brother-in-law were sleeping together. Yeah. How do you how do you know this? And did your sister know this? My sister didn't know, but I ended was up, your, I'm the one that figured it out. I told was her your husband. How did you figure it out? So okay, so when I first found out that my husband was sleeping with men, I went to my brother-in-law about it, and he was like, "Duh." So my brother-in-law been in prison for ten years, and no, was it, yeah, 10 years. And he'd been in prison since he was a little kid. So when he came out, the only woman he had was my sister. And I remember my ex-husband and him going fishing down the street, but there was no fish in the pond because that pond didn't carry fishes. So I started putting two and two together when my brother-in-law said he knew that my husband was gay and didn't tell me. So wow. that's when I put two and two together. And I told my sister and I had her to think, think. And she, that's when she was like, oh, my God. So, so how did it make both of y'all feel? Like, what were y'all, what, were, what was y'all communication like after realizing this? Well, I snapped. I'm not going to lie. I was snapping the whole time I was on the phone with her. And she was, she's more of the calm sister. And she was just taking it all in. But, you know, she she's regular with her testing. So I'm glad that. She didn't get anything um, because anal is one of the quickest ways um, to get HIV. And that's why really? they call it the gay man disease, because that is one of the quickest ways to get HIV because the back door. That's how I got HIV because of anal. Okay. 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 So is it a red flag when a man wants to do anal? Like, mm. it, should that be a red flag? You know, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think so. It's suspicious a little bit. Like, I want to say it's more of if he want to try it because he never really had it, then I understand right. that because he probably heard about it. But had it as in, as in giving or giving, had it not as getting, in... giving. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. I was just, that was he wants to like see, you know, but, what right. the booty do. Right. But, right. But what's the red flag? If he's pressuring you to do it, my ex husband was pressuring me to do a nano. 
Like if he's pressuring wow. you, making you feel bad for not wanting to do it, and if he wanted to do anal all the time, that's the red flag right there. Oh, and check that phone for Craigslist. Craigslist? Oh, girl. As I in, went on as there. In... I went on there, and there were a lot of married men and men that's dating saying, "Oh, my wife is out of town. I'm looking for a lone big thing." Yeah, and so. <laughs> That's how I found out. Check your phone for Craigslist, ladies. Goodness. Check your phone for Craigslist. So back to the relationship. So you tell your daddy how good it is. No, 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 no. Oh, 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 we passed that. You find out. What is? What did you? So what was the end result? What was the cause and effect after you and your sister finding out? What did y'all decide to do? After you and your sister found out that your husband and her husband was knocking boots. And and I got to tell you, this no, that was recently. I just told my sister this. She didn't know. I Wait. didn't think she could handle it at that moment. No. What? Yeah. I so just you kept you kept you kept it to yourself. Did you mm-hmm. did you confront him about it? No. Wow. And I know you didn't lie. know that he was sleeping with your dad yet. No. Okay, girl. I'm gonna. Did you tell anybody? Did you confide mm-hmm. to anybody about this? No, I kept it to myself. Well, I'm gonna need you to keep with the tea. So keep so keep baby. going. For, so you 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 put two and two together. So what I didn't happens say next? I didn't say nothing. I just played dumb. How could you not say nothing? I would not be able to sleep at night. Like, my stomach would be, I would be throwing up. Because Did I know what he's a capable of. I know what he's a capable of. Right. You know what he's capable of. As in, like, yeah. he, he's a little crazy. Yeah, too crazy. Was he abusive physically? Both. Mentally. Okay. Emotionally. Okay. Physically, he starved me. Um, I couldn't drink water. I had to, he locked me in the room. So I knew where he was capable of. So I didn't, I was planning. Trust me. You'll hear it. I was planning. I just soaked it all to in. Like, to like, to like, to uh, like. Leave. To get him oh, locked yeah. up or. I left. You were collecting your, your mm-hmm. proof. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good for you. So I get full So custody. were you still sexually active with him during this time? No. Okay. But you didn't know you had HIV yet? No. All right. How'd you get away with not being sexually active if he's like so nutty? Because um, around that time, like I was pregnant. So I was like, I always play sick. Like I can't be around him. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. Girl, you were pregnant with HIV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the first time I was pregnant, um, the very first time the HIV didn't show up. Until like three months later, I was like in my, I was like seven months pregnant when the HIV showed up in my blood. Yeah. And you hadn't had sex with him the whole time? No. After me and him had uh, anal, we didn't have sex after that, but I was already pregnant. And obviously, so at what point, because I think you, it seemed like you found out after you guys broke up that the dad, your dad and him was sleeping together. So at what, Oh, no. Oh, that was during everything going on. Oh, yeah. Okay, so so walk us through. You're pregnant now at this point. Um, where at where in the story did your dad get involved? My dad was in it the whole time. That's why me and my sister stopped talking because my dad told her I called DCF on her so that she can get her baby taken. Like my dad is real messy. Like he's like the girls. He's real messy. Um, so like he was throwing her lies and then he was throwing me and my ex-husband lies. <laughs> he was throwing like me and my ex-husband lies. Like he was just putting us against each other. So, um, my dad know he can't control me when my sister's around. So he did everything he could to get me from her. And I believed him. I did. So, um, I was in college and you know how you get the school check, you know, after you pay all your classes and stuff like that. So I took my school check to get our own apartment. Refund check. Yeah, because he didn't have no <laughs> he didn't have no money. So it was my check that provided us apartment. It was my check that got us furniture. So like the women in the apartment complex thought it was all him. It was me. And mm. um, he didn't have a job. So I'm good at what I did. So I got him a resume and I I picked his brain to know what he do know, and I figured out what he would have been good at, and that was construction. So um, he was doing roofing and stuff like that. I made him up a resume and got him a good job, but he started getting on drugs, and he started realizing that- What kind of drugs? 
Um, he was on Flocka. He was on Molly. He was on um, Flocka. I don't I think don't it was crack. Ain't that the uh, Flocka? Ain't that the 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 fake weed? Yeah, the one that make you want to bite people face off. Yeah, that one. Um, Goodness. He was also doing like he was sniffing and stuff like that because he actually did it in front of me one time, and while the other dude was smoking crack in front of my face while I was pregnant. So, um, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, That's y'all. A, this is a lot. It so, is. <laughs> yeah, like, so um, you, so whether he lost his job at, at, uh, soon after, like when he was so doing all the drugs and stuff? He was losing his job because he was drinking a lot. And then I realized that he was sleeping with his boss as no. well. A yeah, guy How did or you girl? realize this? A guy, obviously. A construction boss? Mm hmm. Man, so these 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 these, these down niggas out here fucking out boo. Here. They out here bending over for real for now each other. How'd you know they were sleeping together? So instead of him coming home after work, you know, to come to the cook meal that I cooked him and the bath water that I ran and his beer was ready, you know, because he Are didn't make me that. look bad. Shh, 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 oh no, shh, shh, I have that problem now. So no, you okay? <laughs> 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 so That's um. A note. You know, I thought that's what a wife's supposed to do. I mean, I'm young, so I don't know nothing about no wife. And, she ain't know um, nothing bad. No, she knew it. When she, she got it right. When he was like, he'll come home. He'll come home later than normal. And I would watch the boss man drop him down the street instead of in front of the house. Um, oh my God. So when so he you, get out you work, really are smart. You, you I would ask intuition. him, like, where you been? He'd be like, oh, man, my boss went drinking. And I knew then what time it was. You knew he was... Fucking his boss, fucking your brother-in-law, and you about to find out he fucking your daddy. Now that, I actually found that out a couple of days later. So I went to uh, his of phone. The, of, the, of the boss? No, my dad. A couple of days later after the boss. Yeah. I went to his phone. Yo. I, I, I seen the butt, my dad butt in his phone. And I, like my ex-husband's a prostitute, so he was like sleeping with men for money. So, um... I've seen it in his phone and including your dad, your dad was mm-hmm. paying him to sleep with him. And my response was, nigga, you gay. You ain't tell me. I finally snapped. I finally snapped because I took so much and I finally stopped. And I said, nigga, you gay. You didn't tell me. And I was and you're punching him at the time. Mm-hmm. I was punching him and everything. And he was like, no, baby, that's somebody had my phone. Ooh, I just got the chills. Like he was just saying that people had his phone. It wasn't him. You know, he'll never do me like that and stuff like that. So did you bring up everything else or just you Mm-mm. stayed at just No, I just got up like a wife. Oh, you dangerous. Made his lunch and said, I'll see you when you get off work, babe. So when he got off work, I made him a bottle, you know, opened his beer up and I crunched some um some glass and I put it in there. Whoa. In the beer? In the beer. So you tried to kill him? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did um now it, obviously the stories of the entire everything is all over the press. Like it was this part of the story. It's kind of one of those things where they know you did this. Well, he didn't drink it. <laughs> did he know, or why didn't he drink it? Because he saw it in my eyes. Yeah, Brenda, I look. He's seeing your eyes right now, girl. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry. I had a you flashback. You low-key a little crazy. It's cool, though. It's cool. No, uh, I mean, I mean you had happens. every right this to do what, what you did, man. but, like, the way you said, uh-huh, or whatever you said. I'm it was sorry. it was a flashback. I'm sorry. Well, it was a flashback. No, I'm I get like, it. I get it. So he, did no. he just not, did he confront you about it, or he just didn't drink it? He looked me in my eyes, and then he he went to the sink. I followed him and he poured it out and he saw it. What did he what did he do? He left. Yeah, he should have never came home. The fuck? So now, did you ever <laughs> talk to him about the, that you seen your dad's butt in his phone? Right. Yeah. He was like, No, that's nasty. I would never do that. I would never So I was he like, said somebody else. Did you the- say I know what my daddy butt looked like is my daddy? I knew he was lying. No. He knew. He knew. <laughs> he knew. Yeah, I he knew did. because the dreams that God was giving me about him. God showed right. me him sleeping with two women, and it was having a threesome. The the opposite of a woman is a man, and when I told him that dream, he got mad and left. So I knew. He knew. I knew. Whoa. So 
did you ever confront your dad about this? Of course. Right. He just sweep tell, down us, the tell us how that went now that you know. He just sweep down the road like he always do everything else. Oh, that's the past. We're not going to pass. God deliver me. Um, God moving on yeah. to bigger things. That's his that's gonna always be his excuse and everything. Who the hell is at his church? Oh, is it a is it a big Ooh, church, almost, small church? I almost said something. I'm not gonna say that because you never know who's watching, but I don't want to offend anybody. I'm just gonna say not everybody have a brain. Mm. Right. Yeah. Is it a big church? No. How 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 many people are you thinking? Um, every year I would say it's a different type of people. Um, because he burned too many bridges. So I would say he keep the same um um you know how they call it the mothers of the church he keep the same yeah. women you know but he always have a new daughter and he always um like he'll be getting the men that sex offenders and he will house them and they will be his members of the church it's a bunch of sex offenders but my thing is there will be children there and why is all these these sex offenders around children and what's the name of this church i do not know I don't even remember if I'm going to be honest, but I would have told you if I did. Okay. Really? You, you don't know your dad's church? I no, don't. Is he still um, doing this now? Yes. He's still a bishop. He's nah, married to we, a woman uh, now. Offline, I need all the information. Yeah, we, we about to make this shit. We, we, about, about, to, to we about to sell the documentary to Netflix. They're going to need to know about this shit. <laughs> this shit need to be shut down tonight. Yeah, I am pissed off, man. This is this is ridiculous. I agree. Where are there where are these kids' mothers? Like, when you are, it's like he know how to pick them. He know to pick the weak. He find weak people, mm -hmm. weak women, weak yeah, men. Like people, people gone that through are vulnerable things, right? and just going through. Mm -hmm. So, so you got married before you got pregnant, obviously. Yeah. What, right. Right. And what what was the marriage like? Like. Um, in the beginning, it was it was amazing. In the beginning, he was just so sweet, and you know, he was he was really a good dude. And then it's like a switch. And I heard him say before that he has to get his sight meds. I still he has to get what his sight, sight meds. meds. I still to this day don't even know what that is. Do you right. guys know? Sight, like yeah, like I mean, like it, mental. It's like mental it's, medicine, like for his mental health, like meds, like psychotic medicine. Yeah, mm. like he would have psychotic episodes, maybe. Um, psych meds. That's probably why he take. That's probably why he does other drugs if he's not taking his psych meds. He might have, depression. like, let's say he could be like schizophrenic or something of that nature. That would mess up, you know, his, the way that he acts and thinks and carries on. So then he takes meds that would suppress that. And hopefully the goal is just to be more normal and like civilized, you know, not acting yeah. out. Yeah, right. that's what it is. Cause like in the beginning, he was just so amazing. Like it's like almost a movie. Like, you know how the guy, he was so sweet and, you know, family oriented. You're like, wow, I really want to grow a family with him. And then it just a switch just happened. So t walk us through when you gathered all this evidence, how did you lock this deal in? How did you get this guy in jail? So, um, I left him the first time I called the, the I called 911 and they put me in a domestic violence program. Wait, wait, actually, what happened? I'm sorry. You say you left him. What was going on for you to get to that point to leave him? Like, what happened? So, at this point, he's sleeping with every woman and every man in our apartment complex. And a lot of those women, like, I always said, I wonder what their face was like when they saw it on the news. Even my neighbor. Like, she didn't told me I was pregnant. And she was sleeping with my husband the whole time. But um, and, and did they get HIV? Like, did anybody else get HIV? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure. I never, I never went back. But how was this guy able to sleep with everybody? He's he he's had a, a sex addiction. addiction. He had yeah. a gift the gap. He he was he, he was a charming brother. Mm-hmm. Was I, he attractive? Well, <laughs> um, to I me, can show you a picture of him. To okay. me, he was. 
But now looking at him, I was what, like, what was I thinking? I just wonder what the fuck his life like, how do you get to that? So what happened? He's sleeping with every man and woman in your apartment building. Mm-hmm. What happened? So um, it okay. was one night he had um, came home and he was like so high on something. And he was just like, I can't keep living like this. And I remember him keep saying that. Like he said it almost every day. But what I didn't know was he can't keep faking like he don't. He want a woman. He doesn't. Like he likes men more than he likes women. Yeah, and definitely. so he got a knife and put it towards my throat and my stomach and I knew it was time for me to go so whatever drug he was on it passed him out and I called 911 told him what happened they saw it from the house he tore up the house and everything so they grabbed me I was scared because he always told me that if I was to ever get him in handcuffs that he would kill me so um they took me, they took me to the domestic violence program and it's a program, domestic violence program is in places that you would never think that that's the place. And it's amazing. Um, so I was like getting real depressed because I'm pregnant, but they didn't take him to jail. They took him to the, um, uh, what is it called? It's like some type of psych place when the person threatened to kill themselves. Mm-hmm. I can't think it off the top of my head, but he got out the next morning. And then, um, like he was on like suicide watch, right? Psych, he sent it to like a psych ward. Yeah, that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. So, um, I was scared for my life at this point. So, I eventually called him, and you know, I I just couldn't go back. I was too scared. So, my um, my counselor in the domestic violence program, I told her my story and I told her what happened. She's the only person that knew my secret. And um, she was helping me. And one day I just was in a computer lab and I was in the computer lab. I seen all of his emails of the same pictures that he used to send me when we first started talking. He was sending that to men as well. I saw where he was meeting up with men all the way back when I was in high school. Like I'm in ninth grade and he was sleeping with men. Like this been going on for years. Like this, he didn't just get like this. He's been like this since he was a kid. So it's like, why live a double sure, life? Are you sure him and your dad weren't sleeping together and you didn't know before you, when your dad introduced you? No, I don't. Because your dad that. was already on the mm-hmm. down low. It, so, so, cause you, I don't think you explained that part about you telling him that the sex was good. Oh, so why would you, why would you tell like, you know, he's, yeah, how I would never know, tell my dad. How do you know was it was comfortable for you to tell him something like <laughs> because that? Because my dad is like the girls. Like he liked. Mm-hmm. Like my dad used to like hearing about my stripper days. Like how I used to penetrate men. Um, like my sugar daddies, they were like all rich, rich and white. So like I used to penetrate my sugar daddies. I was never the one that was actually getting it. I was giving it to them. My dad was into that type of stuff because I knew my dad was like that. So he used to like be interested in all my stories and stuff like that. So it was just like me and my ex-husband, we were just like dating. We wasn't really something serious yet. And I was talking to my dad. I was like, yeah, it's good. Like, it's too good. Like, it's like I was just describing it. And my dad was like, yeah, I was like, mm-hmm. like, that's how my dad talked with his girls. Like, he's like the girls. And he's messy, so he likes stuff like that. So I didn't think nothing of it. I didn't think that he would turn around and go behind me and try to get Mm some. (laughs) I didn't. I would have never thought. I mean, out of all the people, who are the ones I slept with. Right. So when you were at the shelter and um, you found all these emails, somebody was helping you. At, At any point of time, did you reach out to your dad and let him know what's going on? No, I didn't trust him. Right. So uh, tell us more about like what the uh, counselor, you know, how, how'd you, how'd you, how'd you get him in jail if he got out um, the next day? So um, my counselor helped me get into this program called Brian house. If you're listening to me and if you live in Tallahassee, please donate at Brian house. It was a, an amazing place. Like, Brian House, you can be pregnant and you can be pregnant with a um, one-year-old. And we all had our own rooms. It was like six of us. We had our own rooms. All of us was homeless because I left my home and everything. I love everything. 
Um, we was homeless. We had refrigerators. I mean, it was like a mansion for homeless pregnant mm-hmm. girls. But yeah, we had all these nice things, but mentally, emotionally, we had to deal thing deal with things like once the door shut in our rooms. And um, my counselor, she helped me get into that program because she actually worked there sometimes as well. And she just said, Brenda, you, you're different, you know. So she was just like something about me that made her help me. So um, everything was going good. And then Tallahassee one year, we had a real bad storm and it flooded the entire Tallahassee, Florida. So yeah. like a few days later, I decided to go back home. Because I just convinced myself that maybe, you know, maybe it's something there. I need to figure it out. So I went back home. I'm, I went back home not to stay, but it was just to go visit. When I went into my house, I saw condoms and the house was just destroyed. I Bro, mean, he was having a good time when you was I gone. Mean, yeah, he was living his best life for real. Mm-hmm. So. You was you didn't have to pay rent or anything like while you were well, gone? Or? I paid the rent behind his back up. I paid the rent up behind his back because I knew I couldn't count on him. So mm-hmm. I used my school check and I used my taxes to pay the rent up. Right. So you, you, so you, you're saying you paid in advance. Yeah. I paid my rent up. Wow. Well, I'm country. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I get it. I was just confirming it. Cause it's like, um, like you could have been just paying, you know, I, I kind of thought maybe you're oh, just paying okay, every yeah. month automatically, but you, you, you paid in advance. So he was living in there rent free. You walked right. in. It was a mess. A mess. Like I can tell. Condoms. Was, I mean, it was everything. It was fucking stank. bitches and niggas. Like, mm. no, it was nothing but niggas there. So, mm. um. So people was there when you walked in? No. Mm-mm, no, they she was there. From oh, the right, environment, right, right, the condoms right, right. everywhere. Mm-hmm. He wasn't using that on girls. So, um, I had, I came in and then his friend came behind me and was like, what are you doing here? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, with my husband, cause I'm looking around like, and <laughs> his friend always tell me that he thinks something's wrong with me. Cause I was so calm. I was like, Hey, this your life. This, this ain't got nothing to do with me. So I was calm. And I was like, who called him? He was like, Oh, that's the neighbor. I was like, Oh, okay. Okay. I went over to the neighbor house and I asked, I said, Hey, I didn't know she was sleeping with him. I was like, Hey, um, my husband said that your brother left some condoms. She was like, child, ain't my brother-in-law condoms. Like she was throwing hints that he was messing around, but she slept with him too. Um, so I stayed the night, um, that night and we went to his friend house. That's when I was telling you guys, they were smoking crack in front of me. They was doing coke in front of me. They were smoking. Like, they was just doing the whole night. What yards. made you go to his friend's house with him after, like, I wasn't going to be home by myself. And everything. I wasn't going to be home by myself. I don't know what's going on. Who who comes in and out when I wasn't here? I don't know what's going on. So, I wasn't going to be by myself. Okay. Um. So, I know when he snort coke in front of me, I gave him a look and he knew and he started laughing. And I was like, okay, God, I think this is, this is the time. This is, this is what you were trying to tell me not to pray for anymore. So we went back home and this is the doozy. We went back home and we didn't have no bed anymore. I don't know what happened to my bed. My furniture, all of it is gone. So I, it really feel like a trap house at this point. Like, it looked nothing like how I had it. You like sold your furniture for drugs, probably. I have no clue what happened. It was horrible. So we sleep. Well, I wasn't asleep, but he fell asleep because he was high on everything. So he fell asleep and I noticed um, a phone that i never seen before. And I remember when we first got married in our apartment and he had a bag that he said I could never touch. And even though I was so young, I don't understand how would I not be sneaky and go in the bag, even when he was at work. But I I wasn't allowed to touch a certain bag in the closet. So I went through that phone while he was asleep. And I that's when I found out that this is not no phase that he's going through. This is what he likes. This is a this is what I do my whole life type thing. Like I saw messages all the way when I was in middle school. 
you know, of men and him saying I'm outside and they meeting up. I even saw the message the whole time we was married from the time we was dating. He was sleeping with men the whole time he was sleeping with me. So um, I started crying a little bit and I'm like, how did I get this low in my life? Like after how far I've along at you at of how far along are you at this point? I'm like six months pregnant. Okay. So um, I went outside because I was so hungry. He didn't have no food. He wouldn't give me no food. I was so hungry. I was thirsty. And I was sitting on the stairs and I was crying. Like, and there was two guys in a the car. They could have raped me. They could have kidnapped me and everything. And they asked me, was I okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And I just started back crying. And then I saw this lady smoking a cigarette. I felt more comfortable talking to the lady. And I crawled to her because I was throwing up stomach acid. And I crawled to her and I begged her for some water. And I can tell she spit in it, but I didn't care. I was just so thirsty. Um, but I didn't know she was sleeping with my husband as well. Um, she didn't even want to give it to me. So I crawled back and I just cried. And I was like, this is it. This is it. This is it, Brenda. I don't care what happens, how it's going to happen, it's going to happen. So I went in the house. Um, no, before I went in the house, um, they, the guys asked me again, was I okay? Because I knew one of the guys because he was the neighbor, but I didn't know he was attractive to me. Like, I, I didn't know. Like, I'm so naive and green. I, I didn't really pay attention to it. So my ex-husband heard men, and he realized that I wasn't, like, laying with him. So he opened the door, looked down at me, and grabbed me by my hair and put me in the house. And the dude was like, hey, man, that's crazy, man. That girl pregnant, you know. He was like, mind your effing business. Shut the door. And he said, I'll kill you if you go and talk to them niggas again. So I just, like, cried and stuff like that. He went back to sleep. And then I was texting my older sister. I said, listen, I got to get out of here. And I got to get out of here now. Like, now. So um, she was like, are you serious, Brenda? I was like, yeah, I'm serious. I got to go. So she booked me a ticket back to home to Jacksonville. And then um, I had, he took me to the bus stop when we woke up that morning. Well, I was never sleep. I pretended like I woke up, but he took me to the bus stop. Who took you to the bus stop? Your husband? My ex-husband. Mm-hmm. He took me to the okay, bus so stop. He knew you were, go- you were leaving. No, he knew I was, he thought I was going back to the shelter. So he was cool with you staying in the shelter. Mm-hmm. So he can live his best life. Yeah. His so, life. um, I had, when I was, I was on, before I got on the bus, I looked in his eyes and I said, bye. Now, one thing about me, and he should know this, that if I say bye, that should mean something versus see you later. Cause even if I don't see you again, I'm going to tell you, see you later. So I told him bye and I looked in his eyes and I left and Soon I got back to the show, I immediately started getting my stuff together so I can get on the bus. And Breon House, um, the at the at the time she was the director, and she helped me get to the Greyhound. Mm-hmm. And she, the problem is, a lot of women that said they're gonna leave their abuser, they don't. They'll go back, so but they're lost to the program. So I believe she came with me to see if I was really leaving. And when she realized when I got my ticket that mm-hmm. I was really done, she ended up giving me some money to eat because she knew I didn't have any. So around that time, I was HIV positive and had no clue, but I had the symptoms of it. Um, And what are the symptoms? um, They're like flu-like symptoms. If you ever had the flu, it's like the flu-like symptoms. And I was like, I was, I couldn't really like breathe when I was working at Wendy's. And I thought it was part of my pregnancy. All the symptoms I had, I thought it was part of pregnancy because I never had a baby before. So um, I got on a Greyhound. I left. My ex-husband had no clue that I was not living in Tallahassee anymore. He thought I was in, uh, he thought I was in the shelter the whole time, but I wasn't. I moved back to Jacksonville. So um, to fast forward, I ended up going back home with my mom and my stepdad. My stepdad pretty much raised me. Um, He was an amazing man. Like he taught me a lot. And that's why I don't understand why I was searching for my real father, but I guess to be honest, it's still a hole that needed to be like filled in a way. So mm-hmm. I went back home to my parents, my sister, we are, we one year apart. Like I'm the oldest, she the second oldest. And my mom took me to the doctor. What I didn't realize was how skinny I was. Like I'd never been skinny my whole life. 
and my mom and my dad and I call him my dad. So don't get confused. You're about the real dad and dad, but my yeah. mom and my that dad guy. who died from COVID, he did die from COVID. Um, oh, wow. They took me to the hospital because I didn't have a doctor in Jacksonville. So they took me to the hospital. We was laughing, happy. You know, it's the first grandbaby. So my mom told the nurse to tell the doctor to test me and test me for everything. And she mean everything. Because if you don't request HIV and AIDS, you're not going to get it. So if you think you're going to wow. get tested for STDs and stuff, HIV is not included in that. You have to request HIV. That's why so many people live for it years and not know. So... Mm-hmm. um. They tested me. So I'm on the phone with my ex-husband. At this point, he knows I'm in Jacksonville. Um, I was on the phone with him and the nurse called me. And she said, hi, Brenda, I need you to come in tomorrow. And I was like, what? I just came like, I'm tired. And she was like, I really need you to come tomorrow. So I was like, okay. But I had this feeling that something was wrong. So I called my ex-husband back. I said, is there something you didn't tell me? Like, I knew it was something. I just couldn't figure out what it was. And I was like, is there something you need to tell me? And he was like, tell you what? I was like, because they asked me to come in. You know, he was like, no, 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 no. So I went in the next day. I went in the next day. I noticed that we was walking the opposite side of the hospital. And I I noticed that it was a bunch of different diseases on the wall. And I was like, ma, what's going on? At this point, I'm scared. I'm 20 years old at this point. So I'm scared. And it's like my mom, she's a prophet. So she kind of knew what God showed her and he prepared her heart. So. Um, That's why she said test her for everything. Yeah. God already told her. So um, the lady, she came in and she was like, hi, Miss Brenda. Do you want your mom to stay, you know, with this information? And I was like, well, mom, whatever it is, just let me swallow it. Whatever it is. I still would never thought HIV. So she was like, hi, Brenda, you was tested. Your blood came back as positive for HIV. And I was like, what? I said, nah, I'm too young. Like, I wasn't educated about HIV. So I was just like, I'm too young. Like, I can't have HIV. What are you talking about? And that moment I screamed on top of my lung, the whole hospital heard it. And I was screaming. I couldn't even cry. Like, I became so numb. I couldn't even cry. So my mom, she busted like she read the fight because she don't know what's going on. So the doctor ended up telling my mom and I can tell my mom felt like I failed my daughter, you know. So my mom, she walked me to the car and I was just I went as soon I walked out the door. The first thing I say in my head was why the world is still moving. I just found out I'm HIV positive. And that's when I realized with or without you, the world going to always keep going. So I got in the car and my mom was trying to comfort me. And she was telling me about this girl that's an advocate here where I'm from. And she can talk to me. Oh, God, this is a drama going to come in at. So we get home. I called my stepdad. I called my sister and I told them both, hey, I'm positive. You know, the only reason why I told them is because we got to figure this out because none of us are educated on it. So they crying on the phone. I can tell my dad his response, you know, was like he couldn't protect me. You know, this is his baby. This is Sweet Pea. You know, I didn't send her there for this, you know, all of this stuff. So the lady came. I talked to her. I told her what happened. And she was like, well, who you got in front? I said, my husband. My husband. And that's when it down on me that I never called him. So. I ended up calling him and I said, so nigga, when you was going to tell me? And then he was like, tell you what? I said, nigga, when you was going to tell me? And then he was like, tell you what? I said that you gave me HIV. His response was, no, bam, no, no. I said, nigga, don't play with me. And I hung up. Not even 30 minutes later, the mother before me called me on Facebook. She you was like, the hi, mother before you. the mother before the, me. his baby, mm-hmm. wait, the baby mom, mm-hmm. his, his previous baby mother. Cause mm-hmm. you, did you know he had kids? I did, but I thought he was lying about it. Mm-hmm. Cause I, cause so, I'd never seen them. Right. How many kids does he have? He claimed he have 17. Come on. But I only seen one. And you knew this? Yeah, I did. 
Come on. And you said you only seen one? I only seen one and this because of a picture. He got 17 kids because he out here fucking Do you think he really, he really has 17 kids at this point? Now, I don't think he know what he has. He got more than 17. So one of the moms call you. What is she saying? So the mother before me, she was a Caucasian woman. And she called me. She was like, hi, I know you don't really know me, but are you Derek's wife? And I was like, at this point, I just found out I'm HIV positive. So I really don't care to be called that. But I was like, yeah. Like, I was real dry and cold hearted at this point. And she was like, I know, I I think you know me a little bit, but I'm I'm Carrie. God bless the dead. She did pass away um, mm. from AIDS complications. But she was like, I'm Carrie. I'm, I'm Derek's um, baby mom. And I was like, yeah, I know who you are. You called my house one night late. How can I help you? She was like, um, well, do you know he HIV positive? I know now because I am. She was like, oh, he gave it to me too. Like she just started crying and she was just like, he gave it to her too. She found out the way I found out. The only difference is she found out during her labor, she was getting ready to push her son out and they end up calling um, C-section, emergency C-section on her. Um, and then she was just telling me how, you know, he used to go sleep with the gay guys upstairs where they lived at and she was just giving me the whole nine yards. And at first, I didn't feel bad for her because how you sleep with your mom boyfriend. But I, at the same time. Wait, how do you sleep with your mom's boyfriend? He was yeah. her mom's boyfriend first? Yeah. How old was she when she slept with him? If you want me to be honest, I believe Carrie told me she was 17 or 16. What? But he and claimed she gave that him- she- he claimed that she wasn't, but the way Carrie was talking, she was young. She was young when they first was messing around because she was like, she moved with her mom from her dad and her mom was like in drugs and prostitution and stuff like that. And he was with her mom and her mom was way older than my ex-husband. She was old enough to be his, his mama. So um, he had Carrie tricking for him. And he kept her on drugs. And my ex-husband drugged this me before, so too. Sad. Like, he drugged me before, too. So I definitely 100% believed her. And um, she was just going in about everything that happened. And unfortunately, she did give her baby up for adoption. And he did, unfortunately, get HIV. But my daughter is HIV negative, by the grace of God, because she actually and was his- born with it. Wow. Wow, so she ends up dying for from AIDS complications, and yeah. her son also has AIDS. He have HIV. It's a difference. I mean HIV. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, but he he he's like he have no clue that I even exist. He is adopted by another family. This happened years before me and him got together, anyways. But she right, the one that right. convinced me to lock him up, and she was like, Brenda, I can't do it, but you can. She was like, It's too late for Why me. Why does she feel like you can? Because I was the wife and my situation was fresh. Well, and why couldn't she though? I don't know. I don't and know. She had she had AIDS, she didn't have HIV. She did have HIV, but she stopped taking her medicine. It could turn into AIDS. Yeah. Correct. Right. So mm-hmm. it, it, it turned to AIDS and then it she was she, she was doing prostitution, she was drinking and she was on drugs all the whole nine yards. Wow. So I mean it, wow. it made sense, you know, at the end. She gave up on her life when she found out. The day she was HIV positive, she gave up on life. This is just so sad because it's obvious that, like, the guidance wasn't there for everyone in this situation. You know, I don't know your um, ex-husband, but I'm sure his growing up was crazy, too. You know, your father, I mean, it seems like these men and then the women who are going through this yourself, your mother, his ex wife or girlfriend or his ex baby mama who passed away from AIDS. It seems like, you know, everybody's living a very hard life and you guys are making decisions based off of your experiences and what's around you and what seems 
to be the norm because nothing that you have said is normal to me. Yeah, I've never, I've never heard. I've never experienced. I know this stuff is going on. Well, yeah, we know these things are going on, but to this nature. Well, I mean, we know it's going on to this nature, but like to hear it from someone. I say, I'm saying like. The way it's grouped up. Well, yeah, it's everybody. almost like, like everybody involved it's is crazy. Like dealing with this crazy hamster wheel. So she convinced you to lock them up. Uh, so mm-hmm. walk us through how'd you make that happen? And so there's a lot happened- of women that's going to be listening with, with, especially in this part, because <sighs> they might be going through the same situation. They don't know what to do and how to do it. So the advocate she was convincing me as well and i was like well i don't even know where to start so i ended up calling the tallahassee um the tallahassee police station and i told them who are who i was and my story and the fact that he have a record already it was easy for them to you know do it and then when they did their homework the medical they got all the medical records from both sides both parties state got involved because this was a at this point, it's like homicide. Like you purposely gave yeah, this young girl you know, HIV yeah, yeah. and yep, you had it yep. for this many years, you know, um, in the article even tell you how long he knew he had it from day knowledge. And um, apparently it was before then too, because Carrie ended up getting it. God bless the dead. So um, they took my case. It took like a, it took two years. I want to say one and a half years to get resolved, but he was locked up the first two years in jail and two years in prison. He is out currently and he knows that I spread my story and he hates it. But at the same time, he claimed he's getting his family back. I don't know what that means because I am a happily married woman of six years. So I don't know what he's talking about getting his wife back. How was he able to get out? So I think I heard this story a couple years ago. Does it go viral? Like every once in a while, yeah. like as you continue to tell your story, because I've, mm-hmm. I've definitely, my husband is like, hey, you know, our episode podcast tonight, and he, he put me on game, but I did not do my research, and now that we're talking, and, I, and you showed me his picture, mm-hmm. um, his mugshot, uh, I definitely have seen the story. How was he only there for four years? So in Florida, the maximum of five years when you do not disclose your status to someone and they end up getting it as well. The max is five, but they only gave him four. So he played crazy. So they gave him four. Mm. Yeah. And he hasn't tried to get any type of. um, He is crazy girl. He hasn't tried to get, get any type of revenge or anything or attempt or anything. Well, guys showed me a dream. So I keep my distance. I haven't seen him in person um since i locked him up or since i really left tallahassee i haven't never seen him physically even when he been out um i just it was just over the phone thing and it's barely um because i don't trust him i don't want nothing to do with him my daughter she doesn't she know now she knows that's her biological father but the only man she know is brandon brandon have been in my children's life before lizzie turned one and before um isabella was born and then me and Brandon had a daughter together and all of my kids. And so you my have husband. two kids with your ex-husband? No. Okay. You had another kid after your ex-husband? Yes. Okay. That's why I said my story is deeper. I had a baby out of loneliness and depression. And, and who, 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 who was the guy? The worst experience of my life. Well, he's about neck and neck with my ex-husband. But I can wow. say is that I just made a video on YouTube about this dating out of your insecurities. You date based on what you feel like you're worth. So when you feel like you're worth nothing, you're willing to accept anything to everything that accept you first. Yeah. And that's the position you were in. Mm -hmm. I accepted the first man that accepted me being an HIV woman. And when this happened, what makes him neck and neck? as bad as your ex-husband because he tried to kill me before he tried to kill me before he doesn't want anything to do with her um this is not no i just met him doesn't want anything to do with who my daughter this is not like a like that's why i said my story is deeper because i actually was pregnant by him before before i met my Mm. ex-husband really so y'all had history yeah high school but I never was attracted right. to him. 
it was me dating out of my insecurities. Got it. And yeah, how'd you get happens. how'd you get away how'd you get away from him at that point? Is this like a similar situation? You had to just get away and um, look back. His real father, well, his dad was telling me how crazy he was, and I found out the hard way. And his mom, she just was convinced that I wasn't pregnant with his child. So she even, like, my baby wasn't even out the hospital a day yet. She made us do a DNA test in my mom's living room. I never called back when when the test said 99.9. So, yeah, the whole family crazy, uh, if you ask me. So I, I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson. Yeah, and I've, I've... That's what I do, what I do for a living. I talk to women. I talk to young women, old women. I don't care how old you are. I'm the example of what not to be. So this is why I do this. This is why I spread my story because you'll be surprised of the emails and inboxes that I get from women and men. Um, men that is um, homosexual, for some reason they are, um, how can I put this? They're like a magnet to me, I guess, because I'm very open and free. I don't judge nobody of who you are. I don't care about, yeah, um, a gay man deceived me, but that is, that don't have nothing to do with you and me. Right, right. You have nothing against gay men. Right. right. Yeah, so of course. We can't they, put everybody they in really, a box just because one person messed right. up. Right. And they know I'm not like that. And that's why they they always talk to me and box me. And, you know, I, I do. I have more gay men reach out to me than women. But this is what I do. I tell my story and I be honest. There's no reason to lie. I did what I did. I learned my lesson, but you can prevent it happening to you. Oh, and when the gay men reach out to you, are they like, what are they saying? Like, are they trying? I can't really like, disclose a lot of information, but just know they understand me. I'm going to put it okay, like that. Okay, okay. They understand my story. Yeah. Um, Man, this was uh, I, I just know there's probably a few rabbit holes we could jump in, and we'll, we'll be here for maybe Forever. another four or five hours. Yeah, but I think that our discussion um right now, man, very impactful. I know it's going to change some lives. What are some like last words you would leave to the viewers? Um, and that, some lessons that you learned yeah. too, like like what Things some lessons and some, and some stuff advice, like that. yeah. Um. Somebody asked me, um, one thing I do want to say is somebody asked me, Brenda, why are you really doing this? And I always tell them that I want to be the person who represent, if God can do it for me, he can do it for you. After everything I've been through in life, everything you read about me, everything you've seen about me, I'm still breathing. I'm still happy. I don't look like what I've been through. If you're young and you think dating an older man is where is that because he's mature, I'm letting you know now, baby, you are being manipulated and it's not worth it because you're going to look back and realize you spent all your years on a man who lived his life. And if you're HIV positive or if you have AIDS, and I'm going to always say this, babe, there's life after HIV. That's it. Thanks, Brenda. God bless Thank you. you. If you can do anything for us, please send us a link uh, for your book. Let, it, let, let us know the title know where again, where we can it. buy it. I will be definitely buying a book because I might make it into a movie. We might work together. So tell, I would love that. Tell everybody, yeah, tell everybody about the title of the book, where we can buy it, because I would love to buy this book. So my book is called Bruised But Not Broken. And my website is IamBrendaJ.org. I'm also mm -hmm. I'm also a YouTuber, and I actually have videos of you actually see me going to get tested, and my husband getting tested, and my kids taking their HIV medicine. I actually show my life, like wow. literally everything. My husband explaining why the doctor said he doesn't have to be on prep. It's not necessary for him to be on prep because of me, and you will actually see like my husband explaining why did he marry a woman with HIV and he's HIV negative. So I also, I'm a blogger. So I show that there's life after HIV, regardless of what I've been through in life, you know, you still can have live your best life and be happy, but God definitely changed my entire life. Like building relationship yeah. with God changed my thinking process 
from being addiction to 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 sex to I'm only with one man, you know, faith where I have never cheated on my husband. I honor him. He's my king. Amen. Sister. So if God can do it for me, he can do it for you. And that's why I started my YouTube channel. You don't have to be HIV positive. I am Brenda J is more than just an HIV woman. So. I yeah. Love it. And I, I love, love what you're doing because definitely as a woman, um, it's so important to have someone that you can view that like is getting through it every day. Um, I can only imagine how some women feel or some people feel when they find out that they're positive. So of course they go straight to the internet and Mm -hmm. to be able to watch your videos, I'm sure has saved many lives. Yes. I get that a lot. I definitely get that a lot. Like women be like, Brenda, you don't understand how much you help me, even men, because I actually have a video soon they get diagnosed. That's the first video they watch before they watch anything else. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Love that. We're going to check out your YouTube and maybe in the future, we'll get you and your husband here. Um, yeah. I would on, love on that the podcast. Yeah, man. Um, we are very thankful for you. Yeah, you are great. Brenda. Uh, amazing. Um, telling your story and, um, we are so proud of you and happy for you. And I'm excited for everything that's going to come in your future. I, I believe is going to continue to be very bright and, um, we're very thankful for you coming on our platform. It was my pleasure. Thank you all. I feel honored. Thanks so much, girl. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right. Yeah. Bye, babe. Woo, that was a really crazy story. And I'm not going to lie, in the beginning, I was like, she crazy. Ain't no way. And then I kept thinking, like, it would be so bad to doubt somebody and they experience. But as she kept talking, I'm like, she didn't make this up. I mean, the story was just something that you've never heard before ever wouldn't even you can't even you can't make this up like someone who wants to write the juiciest book or the craziest documentary or the wildest movie wouldn't even think of these details so i mean listen i I ain't gonna lie i ain't got much to say i ain't got much to say but what i will say is imagine the stories that aren't told Imagine stories are aren't told. I'm so glad she got through this to tell her story. There's a lot of this going on, y'all. A lot of this going on. A lot of people dying. We're trying to tell their story. A lot of people scared. A lot of people shut down right now as we speak. A lot of niggas living on a down low. But this is another mirage marriage, y'all. And honestly, I'm speechless. I want you guys to Same. watch this. Front to back, understand what we're dealing with. We don't want you to be speechless, though. We want we you don't. to drop it in the comments. Yes. Let us know what you're thinking. Yeah, I got nothing else to say. Y'all heard me talk. I need to hear from y'all. Y'all yes. hit the comments. Hit the comments. Hit the likes. Hit the shares. We are very sorry for not dropping an episode in some weeks. But yeah, you know, we go. We get. We, we back birthday. on it. Nola birthday. We got to We got to start from the front. Birthday. First, it was Meek's dad's birthday, February second, right? February fourth. February 2nd. February 2nd. Then it was Charlie's birthday and my mother, Glenda, her birthday, February 12th. Then it was my birthday, February 21st. Then it was Nola's birthday, March 14th. Now. My birthday, March Two 25th. days away. Neek's birthday, March 25th. My mom's birthday. His and mother birthday. and my father's birthday, March 30th. Everybody's clumped up. This is a very busy, it's busy, it's y'all. Busy. And it's not even like work. It's family stuff. It's been busy. We've been busy, but we're back and we have a schedule and we're going to be consistent for y'all. Yeah, we're going to we, bring good content just yeah. like tonight. We go, we've we been doing an episode a week before our little break, but now we're going to try to do two to three episodes a week. Only, Whoa. only if you guys turn up with us. So this is a great example. We have a, we had a great episode. This is an amazing episode. Very powerful. Yes, it's sad, but it's powerful. It's inspirational. We need you guys to fill up those comments, share with everybody. Do that. And um and tell us what you're thinking, man. Like, uh, how do you feel about this story? And um, you know, let's let's get the conversing about it. Um, but 
It's your boy, Neek Bay. Charmaine Bay, wifey. And we love you. And this is the end of this episode. So meet us on our next one. Peace to. Peace to you. Follow at Marriage and Mirage Podcast on Instagram. Like, subscribe, share. At Charmaine Bay. At Neek Bay. Do that. See you on the next episode.